Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the video. Today, we're going to be counting down the top 10 Overwatch League players so far. Now, I did a similar video at the start of the regular season where I listed my top 10 players going into the league and it definitely has changed a lot. Sure, there are some things that are the same. So let's just go ahead and recap. Going into regular season, my top 10 players were the following. Number 10, Baby Bay from San Francisco Shock. Number nine, Miro from Seoul Dynasty. Number eight, Mano from NYXL. Number seven, Effect from Dallas Fuel. Number six, SBB from NYXL. Number five, Rascal from London Spitfire. Number four, Fleta from Seoul Dynasty. Number three, Bird Ring for London Spitfire. Number two, Ryu Jahong from Seoul Dynasty. And number one, Profit from the London Spitfire. These were the 10 players that I was expecting to do very well going into the Overwatch League. And if you're excited to see how much it's changed since the start of the Overwatch League, please be sure to slap a like on the video, guys. Subscribe to my channel. We upload videos every single day about the Overwatch League, whether it's a top 10 list, updates, news. We do it all. So drop a subscription, guys. And let's go ahead and hop into it. Starting off with number 10, we have Bedosin from the London Spitfire. Honestly, someone going into the Overwatch League I didn't have much expectations for. Sure, I knew he was a good player because he was on the London Spitfire, and of course, anybody on that roster is going to be good. But damn, this guy is one of the best Zenyatas in the league. He was up there competing with Jonak. When you look at the statistics and compare him with Jonak, he pretty much is identical in every single category. Whether it's him getting kills and fragging out, or putting the Discord on the right target at the right time. But Dosen is definitely looking like one of the best Zenyatas and supports in the league, and he is a big reason why the London Spitfire captured first place in stage one. Now that the expectations are high for Bedosin, it'll be definitely really interesting seeing how he performs going into stage two. I'm sure though, there's not going to be a drop in performance at all, and he'll do nothing but shine. Moving on to number nine, we have Dream Casper from the Boston Uprising. Now if I reflect and look at myself when I was doing the top 10 list before the regular season started, none of the Boston Uprising players were in my mind. I honestly didn't consider any of them for the top 10, but now after stage one, it was really hard to decide between Dream Casper or Stryker who deserved to be in the top 10. I believe they are both crucial players for their teams and they do so much. But at the end of the day, I think Dream Casper's job is a bit harder than Stryker's and I think Dream Casper has been outperforming him just a little bit. Now the success that Boston Uprising have been having isn't just from these two DPS players though. Their entire roster has been playing great from Note to Nako, all the way back to Stryker, Dream Casper, and Gamsu. They're just playing lights out right now. But to focus in on Dream Casper and why I think he deserves to be on this list, he honestly is just so flexible. And he's not only just flexible, he is incredible on so many heroes. His Genji is top tier, one of the best in the league. His Farah, top tier, one of the best in the league. His Roadhog was absolutely crazy when we saw it on Oasis. His Widowmaker was really crisp. Like I said, he played so many heroes at such a high level. I would have liked to have put him higher, but it was really hard to because there's just so many good players in this league. And I do think Dreamcaster is one of the best and most definitely the biggest surprise of the Overwatch League so far. Moving on to number eight, we have Envy from the Los Angeles Valiant. Now I wanted to put a D.Va on this list. It was hard to put more than one just because they all kind of played the same role. And I figured I would just put the best D.Va on this list. And yeah, I think Envy is the best D.Va in the entire league. His statistics are just flat out insane. And when you watch him play, you can tell he's doing so much. I remember in the first three weeks when we had a lot of videos about the Valiant, all I would do was talk up Envy because he was so incredible. He always seemed to be in the right position at the right time. Sure, he doesn't hit all the amazing bombs like Poco did for the first three weeks, but let's be honest, nobody was really ever going to keep up with that type of diva bomb rate. That was just absurd. Poco did put the work into it, but once teams figured it out, Poco really wasn't that great of a diva anymore. Sure, he was a good one, but he wasn't a great one anymore. And Envy has just looked hands down like a great diva in every single match he's played so far. He is topping the statistics and kills on his team. Let's look at it this way, guys. When you have a player on your team that is out fragging soon on Tracer, you know that guy is absolutely nuts. And that's pretty much Envy in a nutshell on Diva. The guy is nuts. He can also flex to the Roadhog and play other heroes as well at a high level. So Envy 
is a great player. I think he deserves to be number eight on this list. And let's go ahead and move on to number seven. We have Mano from the New York Excelsior. Looking at main tanks was very difficult because there are some really good ones in the league. I think it was clear though that Mano stood out compared to the rest. Sure, he didn't play all the time and Janice got some start time over him, but when Mano was in, he was so effective. He was all over the map, and I think you can just tell by the way the guy plays, he has such a high kill participation. That being said, Mano is all over the map, and it seems like he is doing so much, but at the same time, what is so unique about him is that he is doing that as well as surviving. Another key thing to judge Winston players about is how long they can survive. Mano is a survivor on Winston. He goes into team fights and he does what he needs to do to come out in the end as the Winston who stays alive and outputs a decent amount of damage. Being a Winston in Overwatch competition is so hard. You are typically the first target for every single team and that basically leaves the Winstons in a situation where they want to survive as long as they can. And Mano is so good at this. He is so good at being in the right spot at the right time, and at the same time, just surviving. It's crazy. I don't know how he gets out of some situations, but it just proves that he's one of the best Winstons in the entire world. And there's a big reason why he played for the South Korean World Cup team over some of the others like Miro. I'm really hyped to see how him and the New York Excelsior bounce back for Stage 2. Moving on to number six, we have another main tank, Jester. It was so hard to decide who was the better main tank. Is it Jester? Is it Mano? I looked at their statistics. They were both fairly even. One would be better in one category than the other would be better in the other category. But it was very, very clear that these two were the best Winstons in the entire league, hands down. Like I was talking about Mano's survivability, Jester is even better at it which I think is the main reason I am putting him over Mano, as well as, you know, obviously the London Spitfire did topple the New York Excelsior in Stage 1. That has a little bit to play in as well. But overall, I think Jester is just a magician on this hero. You just are such a target when you play Winston, guys. And I'm not sure some of you realize until you actually play in a team environment how much Winstons get targeted. You have a Tracer on you 24-7. You have a D.Va on you 24-7. Everybody is trying to get that first kill on Monkey. And if you don't know how to survive, then you're just not going to be a good Winston, period. And it's one of the hardest things to do. So I don't understand how a player like Jester and Mano can survive for so long well list doing amazing amounts of damage and collecting kills it's crazy it really is these two players are phenomenal on the winston and again like i said it was so hard to pick a player over the other one but i got jester at rank six now let's move on to number five we have linkster from the houston outlaws i really went back and forth whether i wanted to put linkster or jake on this list or even both of them honestly they have been playing out of their minds but i figured it's the same situation with striker and dream casper i think linkser is just more flexible and therefore his job is harder than jake's yeah jake is insane at junkrat he hands down is one of the best in the league probably top three if not top two but linkser man he just flexes on so many heroes the tracer genji mccree widowmaker farah the guy plays it all, he really does, and every single time you see him on one of these heroes, he is always doing something crazy good for his team. He just wows the crowd with incredible shots, amazing predictions, insane movement. The guy all around the board is so sick at Overwatch, he's really good. The Houston Outlaws are the best Western team, and a lot of that is to Lynx's credit. Like I said with Dream Casper though, obviously he has a lot of good teammates stepping up right now. That's why they're so good overall. Linkser really is a big part of it. I really did try my best to not fill this entire list up with a bunch of DPS players, which would have been very easy to do. I could have put Shadowburn on here. Well, I guess there's leaks right there. Shadowburn is not on the list, but I did consider him. There are a lot of honorable mentions. And it was really hard to choose between them. There's a lot of good DPS players, but I think Linkser is just on that next level. Moving on to number four, we have another DPS player, Birdring, who plays for the London Spitfire. And I'm sure he doesn't need any more of an introduction. The guy is insane at Tracer. His Widowmaker really surprised me. I didn't really have any expectations for him on the Widowmaker going into the Stage 1 playoffs. I just assumed he would be that Tracer bot. But he has played a decent amount of it, and he's done a lot of work even sometimes looking as good as Fleta, who is probably the best Widow in the world. So for Bird Ring to go head to head with Fleta, it really shows how good he is at that Widowmaker. And do I need to talk about the guy's Tracer? 
He's been known as one of the best tracers in the entire world for so long. Him and Prophet are just such a scary duo though, because either of them flex to multiple heroes. It doesn't matter if Birdring is on Genji or Tracer, and vice versa for Prophet, they're still going to put out incredible amounts of damage and look very good. Now, moving on to number three, we have Fleta from Soul Dynasty. Of course, Fleta's gonna make it on this list. Soul Dynasty did kind of flop in stage one. We expected them to be either the winners or in the finals at the least. So them not making the playoffs was a shocker. And it definitely wasn't due to a lack of play from Fleta. He maybe had one bad game total out of the entire stage, which is unbelievable. And also what is unbelievable is his Widowmaker. Hands down, like I said, the number one Widow in the league. Nobody can contest this guy. He's also great at that Genji. He's great at that Farah. He's another one of those flex players that basically does it all and does it all at an extremely high level. He definitely helped the Soul Dynasty get out of a few sticky situations and matches against like the Dallas Fuel where they were down early, but he helped bring the team back from death and won that set as well as a couple other ones. So Fleta, very strong player. It was hard to put Fleta above Birdring just because Birdring has been so good and Lund Spitfire did win stage one. But Fleta has been very dominant on that Widowmaker and nobody can contest him on it. So we're going to give him number three. And moving on to number two, we finally don't have a DPS player. It's Jonak from the New York Excelsior. Now, I put Bedosin on this list, and I mentioned Jonak a few times when talking about him, and what can I say? Jonak is just a beast, man. I personally thought he was a little overhyped going into the Stage 1 regular season, which is why I didn't put him in my top 10, and I had like Ryu Jaehong much higher than him, but damn, has he proved me wrong. Dude, this guy's aim is incredible. He does not miss shots. He has such a low sensitivity. I thought it might be a problem. Jake did come out and say you could get really close range on him and he would struggle at hitting you, but I think that might have been a myth. Jonak definitely busted that one, and it's crazy to say that a support player is the best player on the team when you're not talking about Ryu Jehong, and Ryu Jehong I don't think is the best player on his team anymore, and now Jonak is the only support player who's the best player on their entire team, which is crazy to say it really is, especially when you have like Pine on your team, SBB, and by the way the guys, the reason I didn't put Pine on this list is because I figured he didn't have that much playtime. Really only played one map every single set, and sometimes he didn't play. You guys can be the judge of that. Let me know what you think about me not putting him on here due to his playtime. I know he is very good, and he is one of the best players in the entire league, and he is a big honorable mention, but I just didn't put him on here. As for SBB, he didn't make the list because, yeah, he's a good tracer, but I feel like there's a lot of other Tracers in the league who were just as good as him in Stage 1. Just to name a few, there is Soon, Striker, Bunny, and I felt like some of these other DPS players deserve to be on here. That being said, SBB, another great honorable mention. He played awesome in Stage 1, and I can't wait to see him bounce back as well. Now back to Jonak, the guy is just incredible. The best Zenyatta hands down in the league right now. And let's go ahead and move on to number 1, and you guys probably know who it is by now since I have not named him. It is the man, Prophet, and I know you guys think I have something for him, which I mean, I do. I do have something for Prophet. The guy's a freaking god. He's the best player in the league. You can't deny it. There is straight hard evidence. If you look at this man's stats, they're absolutely unreal. Let's just go ahead and talk about his statistics real quick. He is by far the number one junk rat in the league, and statistically, is clearly the best. He has the best KD, the best win rate, the highest rating, the second best kill participation. The guy just is incredible on Junkrat. He's the best Junkrat in the league, hands down. Now moving on to Tracer, he is also by far the best Tracer in the league. I mean by far, a huge margin guys. It's, it's mind blowing how good he is on the Tracer. The only person even close to his Tracer is Pine. Now remember, Pine is strictly only played Tracer against the Shanghai Dragons. Put that into perspective. Prophet has played Tracer against every single team in the league, and he is the number one by far. He has the, one of the highest kill participation, the highest kills per 10 minutes, the lowest deaths per 10 minutes, the highest KD. His KD is 2.7. The next highest KD behind him is 1.87, which is Striker. He is nearly a whole KD higher than Striker on Tracer. And he doesn't even main Tracer when Striker plays Tracer 24-7, along with Soon, Birdring, SBB, Asher, Dante, Effect, 
All these guys basically play Tracer 24-7. Profit just flexes onto it and is the best one in the world. It's crazy. It's crazy. I know. I'm going on a rampage right now. Let's go ahead and talk about his Genji. Now, for most of the season up until like week four, Profit was the number one Genji by far as well. He has slipped a little bit and is behind some of the players, but still has a remarkable stat line. He's got one of the best KDs, he dies one of the least, and has a high kill participation along with kills per 10 minutes. So as Genji, world class, when you watch him play it, it's incredible, and it's just mind-blowing that the guy is so good at so many heroes. The Overwatch League also dropped a tweet yesterday which stated the best KDs in the Overwatch League, and overall, Profit has the best KD in the entire league. The only person who was close to him was Pine. Other than that, the guy under Pine was miles behind. And let's remember, Pine hardly plays. The evidence is there, guys. You can say I'm riding profit as much as you want, but I'm just being real with you guys. I think he's the best player in the league. I thought he was the best player going into the regular season, and I still do think he's the best player. He has completely proved it. He backed my points up in my first video talking about the top 10. So, thank you, Profit. Thank you for playing so good. You're an amazing player. Everybody on this list is an amazing player. So now that I've given you guys my full top 10 list, let's go ahead and put them side by side and see what has changed. So starting off with our number one position, we have Profit. Nothing changed there. Like I said, best player in the Overwatch League. Moving on to the second one, I had Ryu Jehong at number two on my first top 10 list who didn't even make my second top 10 list, which some of you guys may be surprised. The reason I didn't put him in is just I feel like he kind of struggled, and they ran Jita over him for really crucial games, so we never really seen him perform at a high level against some of the best teams. So I, I don't know, I just couldn't put him up here. Instead, we replaced him with who I think is the best Zenyatta in support in the league right now, Jonak. Moving on to number three and four, a little bit changed. We kind of just swapped out Bird Ring and Fleta. We moved down Bird Ring one and moved Fleta up one. I feel like Fleta impressed me just a little more than I thought he would. I knew he was going to be a god, but his Widowmaker was just so good. I had to put him above Bird Ring. And moving on to number five, we actually replaced Rascal with Lynxer. Now to start off with Rascal, you can't really blame me for not putting him on the list. Of course, he's an amazing player and he didn't get much play time though, so, so there's no logical way for me to be able to put him on a top 10 list, kind of similar to Pine, but he's moving to Dallas Field, so he will get more play time. On our list now, we put Linkser on there, and I already gave you guys my reason. He's a great player. I think he deserves it. Moving on to number six, before we had SBB for New York Excelsior, I already told you guys why I didn't put him on this list. I feel like there was enough NYXL players on here. I don't think he was as impactful as he could have been on the Tracer. He was on a similar level to most of the other ones in the league. So moving on to number seven, we had Effect. Now I think it's fair for me not to put Effect on this list. He really didn't play that great. Now it might not be his fault. His team was very weak and he was flexing a lot of random heroes. So, you know, not much else to say there for Effect. We didn't really get to see him at his peak this stage one. Hopefully he'll be back for stage two. So I had Mana before sitting at number eight. And as you guys can see, I did move him up a slot. He is now sitting at number seven on the new list. I think he definitely earned this. As a main tank, it's really hard to make these lists. Moving on to number nine, we actually had Miro before, who was replaced for Dream Casper on this list. And I didn't put Miro in the top 10. He struggled very hard in stage one. I think he made a lot of mistakes. They need to start playing Kuki over him, in my opinion. And Jester just looks miles above Miro, to be honest. Moving on to number 10, we had Baby Bay, which a lot of you guys thought I was crazy for putting him at number 10. I did think he was going to be a great player in the Overwatch League. Now, maybe he hasn't been great, but he still has been playing really good. He's been able to flex on a lot of heroes and show us what he's capable of on like McCree, Widowmaker, Pharah, but it just hasn't been at the level of some of the other flex gods like Linkser and Dream Casper. So better luck to him in stage two. And once again, guys, if you disagree with any part of my list, let me know down in the comments, guys. What is your list? What do you think I should have changed? And don't forget, drop a like on this video, subscribe to my channel, Overwatch League content every single day. Let me know what you guys want to see next, and follow all my social medias. I'm out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.